My grandmother and grandfather were kind of famous around Anmore. They were outspoken, political, newspaper people. And their homestead is now Anmore City Hall. I recently got to look at some old photographs and a photo album that I've never seen before. This is an early picture of the homestead. My goodness, my grandmother's handwriting on the back tells me it is 1917. My grandmother, Margaret Murray, is holding my dad and he has his pants down. And my grandfather, George, holds little Art, probably a neighbor kid, and Leo the dog. At first, the homestead was used as a weekend getaway, my grandfather's dream that was within their means during the hard times of the early 1900s. A kind of hobby farm where they could grow vegetables, raise livestock, horses and cows, pigs and chickens. They even had a tennis court. But by the 1920s, the South Vancouver Chinook was sold and money became even more scarce. It became where they lived full time. Grandpa George still worked in Vancouver on the Vancouver Morning Sun newspaper. To get to work, there was a lot of walking, including a two hour boat ride. This was a major commute. Grandpa George would also bring all sorts of scavenged items back for the house, doors and windows, stained glass, and then build them into the house himself. Grandpa was a real visionary, not only at the homestead, seeing past all the tree stumps, but also in his ideas as a newspaper man and eventually a politician. He died when I was around seven, and my memories of him were kind and gentle and thoughtful. If Grandpa was the dreamer, Grandma was the doer. Her family was also a farm family, but hers was from Kansas. So living off the land was second nature to her. My dad told me how she was the one raising and slaughtering the chickens and pigs at the homestead. She was tough and a force to be reckoned with. As a kid, I was a little apprehensive around here. Grandma wrote in Country Life magazine about the things she did on the homestead. I think that was her first foray into writing. She loved instructing people in what to do. My dad told me that one time he and a neighbor friend collected bulrushes. They were playing cowboys and Indians and they decided to light the bulrushes on fire and try to send them over the house. Apparently he darn near caught the roof on fire. Of course there wasn't a fire hall across the street at the time. I got to visit the homestead only a few times since grandpa and grandma moved to Lillooet by the time I was born. But it was so great to see these photos, a testament of some real great times, like Grandma Murray wrote on the back of the 1917 homestead picture. These were the days, my dear children, when our hearts were happy and life was funny and gay. Mm -hmm.